Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Genki 2 Lesson 16 lesson here on Tokini Andy. Today, we are going to be covering doing things for others. Very polite requests in Japanese, expressing hopes and wishes in Japanese, describing when things happen in Japanese, and apologizing for specific actions. That's what we're covering today. While I greet everyone here, you can have a look at our color coding system. So how is everyone doing today? Before we get started, if you'd like to help support Tokini Andy channel, we have a Patreon. On the Patreon, we have textbook practice videos where Yuki and I go through the textbook practice with you and we give you the correct answers, where your partners for the exercise that need partners, etc. We also have listening and shadowing videos where you can get listening practice and speaking practice by shadowing along with us. It's also reading practice actually. Listening and shadowing and reading practice is what those videos should be called. There's also vocabulary videos where we go over all the vocabulary from Genki and you get to shadow and copy Yuki's native pronunciation. And there's lots of other cool things too, like tests for all of Genki 1 and eventually all of Genki 2. That's on the Patreon. There's also a merch store. But if you don't want to spend any money, that's perfectly okay. Just hitting the like button or sharing this video or just hanging out and doing your best and trying to learn Japanese along with us is more than enough in my eyes. So thank you for being here tonight, guys. The the very first section is going to just jump right into it, guys. Like we're not we're not taking it easy on you and giving you an easy section first. The very first section is going to blow minds. It's not going to be that bad. If you did okay on lesson 13, remember, morao, kureru, ageru. If you did okay on that, you should be fine on this. This is actually a little bit easier, I think. But we're going to see uh, some of the same some of the same stuff. So, this should be fun. Doing for others in Japanese. So, doing things for others, like doing activities for others. We covered ageru, kureru, and morao, and that's when you give things to people or receive things from people. But you can actually use ageru, kureru, and morao when you do things for other people or when they do things for you. And it's very, very similar in usage to kureru, ageru, and morao on their own. You just attach them to the te form of whatever verb that you did for the person or that they did for you. So when someone does something for someone else, like someone unrelated to you, just two random people are doing things for each other, you use te ageru. When you do something for someone else, you always use te ageru. If you're doing it for someone, it will 100% be te ageru. When someone does something for me, it's te kureru. Now, here's where the big difference is between ageru, kureru, morao, and te ageru, te kureru, and te morao. For just kureru and morao on their own, they're very similar, right? The grammatical construction of the sentence is a little bit different, but the meaning is almost identical uh, when you're just talking about things. But when we're doing the te form of this, te morao has more of a sense of you got someone to do something for you. So you asked them to do something for you and they did it or you literally made them do something. And that's not a, like nine, it's 99% of the time it's that. It can also just be that you gain some sort of benefit from the thing they did for you or yeah, for the thing they did for you. So you might not have necessarily made them do it, but you gain some kind of significant benefit from them doing it for you. So then you could use te morao. So that's the main difference. It's not the same as just someone did something for me with te kureru. It's you got someone to do something for you. So I know that's a lot of information, so remember this monstrosity? Well, we're going to be looking at that again today in simplified form, of course. So over here is you. Today it's going to be me. Just I'll be I'll be the stand in for you today. And we're going to start with te ageru. So te ageru is I do something for someone. So I'm going outwards. I do something for random person A, or I do something for my friend or relative, or also close friends or relatives do things for other people, or random people do things for each other, right? It can never come this way. Ageru can never come back to you. And ageru can never come back to someone who's really close to you. This, this is mostly, let me just let you know, guys know here that this is mostly close relatives, immediate family. Like this red circle should really be immediate family, but if if you have like really, really, really close friends, like maybe your best friend in the world who's like family to you, they might fit in this little red circle too. So anyway, ageru can never be coming this way from outside, people outside of your inner circle in. Ageru can't be used that way. Ageru is always moving out from you. 
or between random people. So let's look at some examples so that this makes a little bit more sense. So, tsukutte ageru. I'll make it for you. Tsukutte ageru. Or, I will make it for you. Don't know what it is, doesn't matter. Tsukutte ageru. Just the te form plus ageru. Now remember, ageru is conjugated like an, excuse me, ichidan or iru eru verb. So, katoru add ta. Tomodachi ni tsukutte ageta. I made it for my friend. So, we're going upwards in complexity here. Tomodachi ni. Ohiru wo tsukutte agemashita. So the person that you did something for or someone else did something for is marked by ni. So implied here is watashi wa. Watashi wa tomodachi ni ohiru wo tsukutte agemashita. So you see this o here, right? It's just marked by whatever this, this particle is, whatever this verb would normally take. Tsukuru. The thing you made is always marked by the o particle. It doesn't change when you're using te ageru. It stays the same. So, ohiru wo tsukuru or ohiru wo tsukutte agemashita. It's the same. But the person you made it for is marked by ni. And the person who did the doing of the action, wow, this is hard to say, is marked by wa or ga. Watashi wa tomodachi ni ohiru wo tsukutte Agemashita, made for them. So you notice here that this is doing things for him. I made it for them, for their sake. Okay, so now let's move on to te kureru. Te kureru is the exact opposite of ageru in the sense that it's always coming in. So from friends and relatives to me, or from random people to me. And you can use it if it's someone, once again, in your very tight inner circle. Close family as an immediate family, right? Your parents or your brothers and sisters. And uh, super close friends, not just any friends, super close friends, people who you're really, really close to. You can sort of, you can take their viewpoint in some sense. So you can say kureru, te kureru. But for the most part, to stay safe, try and only use kureru, te kureru, when it's coming to you. So when someone does something for you, for example, tsukutte kureru? A very casual question here. Tsukutte kureru. Will you make it for me? You can use this with family or, you know, your your significant other or something. That's the, what kind of sentence this is. I wouldn't use this with random people out on the street. Nani nani yatte kureru. But tsukutte kureru is very good for people who are close to you. Tsukutte kureru. All right. Going upwards in complexity. Tomodachi ga tsukutte kureta. Kureru is also an iru eru verb, an ichidan verb, so you just cut the ru and add ta to make it past tense. My friend made it for me, so here watashi wa, uh, watashi ni is always implied with kureru. In fact, kureru on its own generally means for me, so you almost never have watashi ni in a kureru sentence. If you wanted to do the full sentence though, it would be tomodachi ga watashi ni tsukutte kureta. But because you're using kureta, it's implied that it's me. So most people never say watashi ni tsukutte kureta because who else would they be doing that for? Okay, so tomodachi ga tsukutte kureta. So that's from here. Maybe tomodachi ga, they made it, te kureta. Tomoda, what did they make for me? Tomodachi ga ohiru wo tsukutte kuremashita. Same with kuremashita. Whatever the verb is, particles work the same way as they would in normal sentences with it. My friend made lunch for me. Next is morao. Morao is... Morao, the rules for morao are exactly the same. Te morao are the same as they are for regular, regular morao. You can't do it between random strangers. It's from random person to your immediate inner circle or from other people into you. Te morao. And that generally means that you get someone to do something for you. So, tsukutte morao. Have them make it for me. Tsukutte morao. Or I'm gonna have them make it for me. Would be another way you could translate that. Tomodachi ni tsukutte moratta. So the person who did the thing for you now is marked by ni. Unlike kureru, te kureru. Te kureru, you're marked by ni and usually dropped. With morao, you're marked by wa or ga. And the person who's doing the thing for you is marked by ni. So tomodachi ni tsukutte moratta. I had my friend make it for me. I had my friend make it for me. So I had for me is all encompassed in morao. Watashi wa tomodachi ni ohiru wo tsukutte moraitai. So once again, morao is not 
an ichidan verb. It's a godan verb. So you、uh, move up on the chart. U verbs, past tense is small to ta, moratta, te moratta, right? And te moraitai. So, want to have my friend make lunch for me. I want to have my friend make lunch for me. So, you can use it that way as well. I want to have my friend make lunch for me. So, let's take a look at what this would look like, look like、uh, the same kind of sentence in different formats with ageru, kureru, and morao. Look at that. Beast. Boku wa yuki ni ocha wo katte ageta. I bought tea for Yuki. Katte ageta. So Yuki's marked with ni, I'm marked by wa, right? Yuki wa boku ni ocha wo katte kureta. See, it's just the reverse, the reverse direction. Yuki bought tea for me. Yuki wa boku ni ocha wo katte kureta. You cannot use ageru in this situation. You cannot say Yuki wa boku ni ocha wo katte ageta. You can't say that. Ageru. You can see here is always going out and kureru is always going in. So you also couldn't say, Boku wa yuki ni ocha wo katte kureta. Cannot say that. Kureru is coming in, not going out. Right. Boku wa yuki ni ocha wo katte moratta. I got Yuki to buy tea for me or I had Yuki buy tea for me.、Oh, by the way, you could also not say, Yuki wa boku ni ocha wo katte moratta. Nope. Uh, boku wa yuki wo shigoto ni tsurete itte ageta. Here we go. Boku wa yuki wo shigoto ni tsurete itte ageta.、Uh, tsurete iku is the verb for to bring someone somewhere. The reason this sentence is here is because so the person and the noun take the same exact particles that they would take in regular sentences based on the verb that is being used. So tsurete iku, the person you're bringing, always takes wo. And the place you're taking them takes ni. That's exactly the same for a te ageru sentence. So, boku wa yuki wo shigoto ni tsurete itte ageta. I brought Yuki to work as a favor. That's what that ageru implies. She couldn't do it herself, so I did it for her as a favor, is what this ageru implies. Yuki ga boku no tame ni ryori shite kureta. Now, this sentence is a little interesting, and there's a reason for this. So, you look at here, right? Tsurete iku. The person. Who you're doing the thing for takes the o particle because you're taking them somewhere. You're doing this thing to them, right? Well, the, the verb ryori suru and stuff like soji suru, they don't take people, right? A person does that thing. So you could,、uh, for example, make a thing. Ryori suru is basically on its own. Most suru verbs are on their own. So, in that situation, right, how do you say that you did that thing for someone? Because they don't take a particle. You would use no tame ni. Tame is for, some, for someone's sake, basically. So, boku no tame ni, for my sake, she cooked. Kureta and kureru can also have、uh, the feeling of just kindly. She was kind enough to do it for me. Because you could totally just say, Yuki ga boku no tame ni ryori o shita. That would be fine. But shite kureta is actually more common when people do some things for you. It's a much nicer way to say that someone did something for you than just flatly stating the fact that they did it. To add that sort of, and that was very nice of her, sense to the sentence, you need kureta. So, Yuki ga boku no tame ni, tame ni, ryori shite kureta. Let's go ahead and jump into the dialogue. I'll read it slowly one time and then at full speed, I'll go over the English translation and get into your comments. Look at all that green. Let's go ahead and jump back to this. Ne. ちょっと手伝ってくれないいいよ。台風が来る前、新しいチラシがいるから、社長から印刷会社に電話してもらいたい。わかった。話してあげるね。ありがとう。あと、これに社長にサインしてもらいたい。それも頼んでくれるいいよ。Full speed. ねえ、ちょっと手伝ってくれないいいよ。台風が来る前、あしあ新しいチラシがいるから、社長から印刷会社に電話してもらいたい。電話してもらいたい。わかった。話してあげるね
ありがとう。あと、これに社長にサインしてもらいたい。それも頼んでくれるいいよ。ねえ、ちょっと手伝ってくれない ?Hey, would you help me a little bit?、Uh, this てくれない is going to be showing up at the end of the lesson, the very last section. So if you want to learn more about that, stick around. But it's basically negating てくれる。And it implies like, wouldn't you help me? Would you help me? It's a slightly polite way to ask someone to do, to request something from someone, but we'll get to that. Te kure nai? Iyo? Sure. Okay, this is a long sentence, so let's break it down. Taifu ga kurumai. Before my ne, the taif, typhoon comes. Before the typhoon comes. So this is the time frame. Atarashi chirashi ga iru kara. We need new pamphlets. We need the new pamphlet in this case. The new pamphlet. Chirashi is like a pamphlet. Well, it is a pamphlet. Chirashi, that's why it's in light blue. This is not in Genki. So, this is, these are both extra vocabulary. Atarashi nu. Chirashi ga iru. This is the to need iru. Kara. Shacho kara insatsu gaisha ni denma shite moraitai. So, shite moraitai. Want to have. Shacho, the company president. Kara, from him. So we, we use,、um, this is the from a person, kara. So from, when you have someone call someone else, you, the person who's getting the call gets a call from, in this case, shacho. It was a weird way to explain it, but hope that made sense. Insatsu gaisha is what you call a printing company. I needed to add this to make this whole story make sense. So, insatsu gaisha. Kaisha is the word for company. Insatsu is the name for printing. Put them together. Insatsu gaisha. Often when combined with another word, especially if it ends in tsu or su, maybe. Tsu and some other characters, it becomes gaisha. Ni denwa shite moraitai. Denwa suru takes ni, the place you're calling, right? Okay, that was a mouthful. Wakatta. Hanashite ageru ne. Understood. I'll call him for you, okay? Hanashite ageru. I'll talk to him for you, okay? Arigato, thanks. Ato, also. Kore ni shacho ni sign shite moraitai. So there's two knees there, but they're different. They're performing different actions. So kore ni means we've got a piece of paper. Kore ni. So, in the direction of this paper, this is where we want the thing which is sign suru done. Do it here. Kore ni sign suru. Okay, so that's what, where that ni applies to. Shacho ni. So we've got ni again, and that's because of the morao. So morao needs to take ni. The person who is being marked by morao needs to take ni. So you got two ni's. Kore ni shacho ni sign shite moraitai. I want to have shacho sign this thing. それも that too. 頼んでくれる。頼む by the way is to,、uh, to ask someone to do something. 頼む。I think that actually is a vocabulary that comes later in maybe chapter 18. So you might not have covered it yet, but that's what it means. 頼む means to have someone do something for you. Ask someone to do something. 頼んでくれる。Will you ask him to do that for me? Good. いいよ、sure. Okay. So that was a heavy section. There might be a lot of questions, but the question for this section is What is something you did for someone recently? In my example, maybe I would say, Tomodachi ni nihongo wo oshiete ageta. I taught Japanese to my friend, and by friends, I mean all of you. Thank you for being here, guys. It's great to have you here. Very polite requests. Lesson 16 covers three different types of very polite requests. You guys will remember that the most common request is te kudasai. You've already learned that in Genki 1. Te kudasai. So te form plus kudasai. kudasai. So for example, tabete kuda, kudasai. Eat, please. Right? But there are more polite ways to make requests. For example, if you were making a request of your boss, and this is the main, the main、uh, request in this section, you would say something like, Te itadakemasen ka? This is a very, very polite form of request. You might use this with your boss or with a professor or something like that. Itadakemasen ka? 
Let's explain where that comes from. So, itadakemasen ka is the, it's the polite potential, so can do, polite potential of the verb and negative. Polite potential negative of itadaku, which means to receive something. It, it's a polite verb that means to receive. So, itadaku, to receive something. You know, you know, itadakimasu. Well, itadakimasu is the polite conjugation of itadaku, and it means I receive this. Itadakimasu. If you don't know that yet, I imagine you all do, but that's that's what people say before they eat in Japan. Every time before they eat. Itadakimasu. So itadaku is to receive. The potential form of can receive is itadakeru. So itadaku, you move down to the A column, so itadakeru, itadakeru. That's the potential form, right? And then the negative of that is itadakemasen ka? Would it be possible for me to receive this action from you? Is what that all comes down to. Te form itadakemasen ka? You don't have to remember all of that, but that's where it comes from. Te form itadakemasen ka? Slightly less polite, but still very polite. I'd say this is a... I, Genki claims that this is exact same politeness level as te kudasai. I disagree, and I'll tell you why. Te kuremasen ka? Te kudasai is... It's polite, but it's a, it's very, it's a direct request. It's asking someone to do something directly. Te kuremasen ka is less direct. It's... Would you be able to do it? Or wouldn't you be able to do this for me? But that sounds really sort of presumptive in English. But it's not in Japanese. Like, it gives someone an out. A heavy out. Saying te kudasai, there's no out to it. You want someone to do it. But kuremasen ka is wouldn't that be possible? In English, it doesn't sound like there's an out. It sounds like you're being presumptive. But in Japanese, it sort of gives them an out. They could say, no, I can't. With this one. So I feel like te kuremasen ka is a little bit more polite than te kudasai. Then there's te kurenai, which is below kudasai, but it's something you would it, you use this with the friends and family all the all the time. Just wouldn't you do that for me or won't you make that for me? It's good te kurenai. Won't you make that for me? And it's it's very low on the politeness level, very casual. Very casual. Use it only with friends or relatives. So let's go look at some examples. Nao shite itadakemasen ka? But I made the English super polite too. It would not be at all possible to have you fix this, would it? That's how you can think of itadakemasen ka. It would not be at all possible to have you fix this, would it? Naoshite kuremasen ka. You wouldn't be able to fix this for me, would you? So that, that would you at the end is what I was looking for. You wouldn't be able to fix this for me, would you? Naosu is to fix something. Naoshite kurenai. Wouldn't you fix this for me? Would you fix this for me? That's that. There it is. Would you fix this for me? is sort of the level of politeness. It's probably even a little less polite than that. But anyway, now stay kurenai. Very common among friends. Some more complicated sentences we have kono meru wo yakushite itadakemasen ka? So, yakusu is to translate. Yakushite itadakemasen ka? What do I want them to translate? This meru. So, it would not be at all possible to have you translate this message, would it? If you were translating this into, like, in an actual book or in an actual document, you would not put this entire sentence. I just want to point that out. I'm just making this entire super long sentence to sort of try and portray how serious this level of, uh, this level of politeness is. Shigoto ni tsurete itte kuremasen ka? You wouldn't be able to take me to work, would you? So this is just like our earlier, ano, tsurete iku, remember? Tsurete itte. Kuremasen ka? And I didn't explain before that uh, te kuremasen ka, that comes from te kureru. That's where we're conjugating that from. Sorry, I'm off center here. Where do I want them to take me? Work. Wakaranai. Setsume shite kurenai. I don't get it. Would you explain it to me? Wakaranai. Setsume shite kurenai. So it's, it's very uh, casual. Would you explain it to me? Alright, so I will go, let's go into the dialogue. I'll read it slowly one time, then at full speed, then we'll go over the English translation. We'll bring up the question for this section, and I'll get to your questions in chat. Sumimasen, shacho. Hai, haite. Shitsure shimasu, shacho. 
印刷会社に電話していただけませんかあいいよもう新しいチラシがいるねそうですよろしくお願いしますあとすみませんがこれにサインしていただけませんかはいわかりましたフォースピーすみません社長はい入って失礼します社長印刷会社に電話していただけませんかあいいよもう新しいチラシがいるねそうですよろしくお願いしますあとすみませんがこれにサインしていただけませんかはいわかりました All right, let's go into the English translation. Beginning's quite easy. Sumimasen. Excuse me. Shacho. Mr. President. Hai. Hai te. This is a command, basically. It's a request, but without kudasai, it's very, uh, very straight. Come in. Hai. Hai te. Shitsure shimas. I will be rude, is the literal translation of this. I will be rude. But it's a set phrase. And it's what you use when you are. Well, there's a few things. When you're hanging up the phone, you're going to hear if you call a company to have them do something for you when they hang up the phone or when they're about to hang up the phone, they'll say, and they hang up. When you're going into an office in a company that you don't work at, you'll enter the office with. When students enter the teacher's room, they always enter with. And when they leave the office, they use the past tense. That's how that's used. So I'm going into the room. That means I'm, I'm coming in. In, a, in someone's house, you would say, That's what you say before you go in someone's house. But when you're going into someone's office, you could also say, uh, You could say that. But <laughs> is more common. Would it be at all possible for you to call the insatsugaisha for me? I will be rude. Mr. President, would you be able to call the printing company for me? Sure, man. Ah, iyo. Sure thing. Mo atarashi chirashi ga iru ne. We already need the new pamphlets, eh? We already need new pamphlets, eh? So this. That's exactly right. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. I think you guys know that one already. Ato. Also. Sumimasen ga. I'm really sorry, but. Kore ni sign shite itadakemasen ka? Would it be at all possible for you to sign this for me? Exactly, yes, please. Also, I'm really sorry, but would you be able to sign this for me? Sumimasen ga. That's, I'm, I'm really sorry, but. Hai, wakarimashita. Yep, understood. All right, so the question for this section is ask me to do something using any of the politeness levels above. Any of them. Itadakemasen ka, uh, kuremasen ka, kurenai. Any of them. It's up to you. You could do them all if you want, whatever. My example would be, Nihongo oshiete kurenai. And you can ask me anything. All right, this is a fun section. This is a fun section because I really liked using this. I found it really useful and I use, got to use it a lot with people I was talking to in the beginning. I think it's a very important section. So let's jump into expressing hopes and wishes in Japanese. When you want to express that you hope that something happens for someone else, use the short form, whether it's of a verb or whatever, and to i desu ne, or to i ne, you can drop the this to make it more casual. So what this literally means is it's good if this happens. Short form to i ne, it would be good if that thing happens. So this to particle is if it would be good if something something happened. But the but the um the usage makes it translate like I hope or I wish for something to happen. For someone else, to say that you hope for something to happen to you, you use to in desu ga or to in dake do for the slightly less polite version along with a short form. Whether it's verbs or adjectives, we'll get there. The reason for that is it's kind of presumptive to say it would be good for a thing to happen to you. It's too direct for Japanese people. So, in desu ga is like, it would be good if this happened, but I doubt it will. It's, it adds some sort of a doubt to it and makes it a little less 
mm, it takes off some of that straightforwardness to it. And that's very important when speaking Japanese. So when you're talking about a hope for something happening to yourself, to in dakedo or to in desu ga. So let's go ahead and look at some examples to see what I mean. So the reason I only had short form and not short form verbs only is because you can use this with adjectives and other things as well. So for example, tanoshi to i desu ne. I hope it's fun for you. You wouldn't be talking about it for yourself. If someone says, uh, what are you doing this weekend? And you say, oh, I'm going to a party. And they say, oh, nice. You can't say, tanoshi to i desu ne. It, it just sounds not good to say that you hope it's fun when you're talking about yourself. It just feels weird. I don't know if it's necessarily grammatically incorrect, but it's too presumptive and nobody... No, not too presumptive. What am I looking for? It's too direct. Japanese people would never say this. Instead, you would say something like, tanoshi to in dakedo. That's what you would say. Our other sentence is, boku da to in desu ga. I wanted to use this sentence, make this sentence. So I'll go, I'll do a more detailed version down below, but I wanted to show you that you can use it with nouns as well. You just need da. Boku da to in desu ga. I hope it's me, but. Ikeru to in dakedo. Uh, ikeru to in dakedo. I hope I can go. Now, the reason for this sentence is, I wanted to point out the fact that you cannot use this construction of to hope with just straight up actions, like things that the person you're speaking to can can just do themselves, like uh, go to a place. Iku to in dakedo. You can't say that. Iku to i desu ne. Can't say it. Iku to in dakedo. Can't say it. Because you can just go. You can do it. So you don't have to hope for it. What you need to do in those situations is you have to say you hope they can go. So you change the verb to the potential form. Ikeru to in dakedo. So you also couldn't say something. You couldn't say taberu to in dakedo. That's not what you can't say that. You can say taberu or taberareru to in dakedo. I hope you. I hope I can eat. So you need to use potential verbs with this construction. If it's something that a person does, if it's a it's a an active verb, right? If it's just something happening to them, like I'll show you in some later examples, I hope. Uh, like, like if you hope it rains, amega furu to in dakedo. You don't need the potential for that because raining just happens, right? It just rains, so you can just use the straight up verbs for that. So things that just happen to people, or if it just happen in general, you can use those verbs alone. But if it's an action that the person does, you need to change it to the potential form. That's all. Okay, so some more examples, more complicated. Tsugi no, tsugi no yasumi wa tanoshi to i desu ne. I hope the next vacation is fun for you. It's implied that we're talking to someone else here because I did not use n desu ga. Maru chan ga dare ka ga suki to iimashita. Boku da to i n dakedo. Maru said she likes someone. I hope it's me, but. So I don't know who Maru chan is, but she said she likes someone and the person speaking hopes it's them. I hope I can go to the party, but I'm really busy this week. I use that kedo to actually connect to another sentence. It implied this sentence without, uh, without it. So this construction implies a reason for why that thing might not happen to you. But you don't actually have to say it. It can just be And the reason it's so um, presumptive is because you're implying that it might not be possible. Whereas with this, you're not suggesting that it might not be possible. You're just saying you really hope it happens. But if you're talking about yourself, you have to be suggesting that it might not happen. It's fine. All right. Let's go over the dialogue. I'll read it once slowly. Once at full speed, we'll go over the English translation. I'll show you the question for this section, and I'll get to your questions in chat. All right, here we go. Shacho is talking. We're talking to Shacho. Hai. Arigato gozaimasu. Hayaku dekiru to i desu ne. Click. Daijoubu desu ka? Daijoubu da yo. Honto ni hayaku dekiru to i ne. Saikin osoin da yo. So desu ne. Shumatsu taifu ga konai to i n da ke do. So, that's it. 
for speed. はい、ありがとうございます。早くできるといいですね。Click. 大丈夫ですか大丈夫だよ。本当に早くできるといいね。最近遅いんだよ。そうですね。週末、台風が来ないといいんだけど、そうだといいですね。Alright, let's go with English. はい、ありがとうございます。早くできるといいですね。Excuse me, yep, thank you very much. I hope you can get it finished quickly. You're hoping that the company that he, he's calling the、uh, printing company, yeah? He's hoping they can finish quickly. And he's hoping that it happens for them, that they can finish quickly. 早くできるといいですね。大丈夫ですか Is everything okay? 大丈夫だよ。本当に早くできるといいね。I really hope they can get it done. 最近遅いんだよ。Recently, they're really slow. そうですね。I see. 週末、台風が来ないといいんだけど。I hope the typhoon doesn't come this weekend, but it's probably gonna. そうだといいですね。I hope so too. For s h a c h o s sake, not necessarily for my sake. That's it, guys. What is something good that you hope happens for yourself? Soon. What is something good that you hope happens for yourself soon? Please use in だけど or in ですが Either way is fine. Something good that happens for yourself. For me, Yuki ga t a k s a n f u r u t o i n da ke do. I hope that lots of snow falls soon. Not necessarily in town, in the mountains. Actually, it's already snowed quite a bit in the mountains nearby us. Our next section is describing when something happens. This is the longest section of any section, I think. It, it, I know for a fact. Up to this point in Genki, it's the longest section of any section in the book. I think it might be the longest section from here on out, too. I, I don't think there's a section in the book that's this long. Any section. Any. There's extremely complicated sections in here, but I don't think any of them are three pages long. This section is three pages long. I don't think that's necessary. I don't think it's that complicated. I think they went into a lot of extra detail that wasn't necessary. It is complicated in the sense that it's a little bit confusing. A little bit. And it still might be a little bit confusing after we go through it tonight. But I'm not sure that it needs three full pages. I'll just point that out. There's a lot of extra unnecessary stuff there. But I'll try and make it as simple as I can. And, and to just be fair, the chapter in Genki isn't that bad. It's not bad. If you read it, you should be able to understand it. But it is a lot. But don't let that fool you into thinking it's super, super difficult. It's not the most difficult section in the book. It's probably not even the most difficult sec section in this chapter. They just cover a lot of different usages of it. Whereas Genki would usually just cover a single usage, they've decided to cover almost all of them here. So let's go ahead and talk about it. That is when things happen in Japanese. And that is with the word or the marker toki, which means at a、uh, time or when. So you use this to mark an event. And by that I mean, here's an event that happened, or will happen, or is going to happen. And when you mark it with toki, it means at that time, at the time of this, this, the main event. So at this time, in this point in time, whatever that is, this main event is going to happen. So for verbs, you'll take the short present or past. That's it. Short present or past. That's all. For e adjectives, e adjectives on their own plus toki. Na adjectives, na adjectives plus na toki. Nouns, noun plus no plus toki. So, noun no toki. Let's look at some examples so you can see that in usage. So, in the present tense of a verb, if the verb is in the present tense, that means that this event is either at the same time as the main event or before it. The main event is pizza wo tabemasu. I eat pizza or I will eat pizza. So, event A is in the present tense. That means it's at the same time as I eat pizza or before I eat pizza because it's in the present tense. So, iku toki pizza o tabemasu when I go, I eat pizza. It can also be a habitual thing、uh, with the present tense and the present tense. Two present tenses together can indicate a habit. Iku toki pizza o tabemasu. So, every time I go, I eat pizza. Is what this could, in, could indicate. It's going to be depending on context or whatever comes before it. We'll get into some more complicated examples. But it could also mean, Iku toki pizza o tabemasu.、Uh, when I go, I'll eat pizza. I've translated here as habitual. When I go, I eat pizza. 
Our next sentence is Ikutoki pizza o tabemashita. So now the second, the main event is in the past tense. So that means it happened in the past. It doesn't matter that this is in the present tense. You don't need to change it just because the event was in the past. What this indicates is that the going of the the going either happened at the same time as you ate the pizza or happened before it. That's why this is in the present tense. Okay? So the whole sequence of events is in the past because the final sentence, the main event is in the past tense. So pizza o tabemashita. So now we know it happened in the past. But it was when I was going or before I was going, one or the other. When I was going, I ate pizza. As in, for example, like when I was going to Japan, I got a visa. That's one of their examples. That means it was before I had gone. So in English, you would say, when I was going to go to Japan, when I was going to go to Japan, I got a visa. That sentence, right? The going to Japan thing is in the future. It hasn't happened yet. When I was going to Japan. That's in the future. And I bought a visa. In this case, I ate pizza. So the going is either in the future or happening now. And then I ate pizza. All right, with e adjectives, and we've got some e adjectives, uh, an adjective and a noun here. Kanashi toki. Pizza o tabemasu. So often when you just use an adjective on its own, it's like a habitual type of thing. So when I'm sad, I eat pizza. Kanashi toki pizza o tabemasu. So this is probably at the same time. Genki na toki pizza o tabemasu. Same with non-adjectives. When I'm energetic, I eat pizza. So this is more of a habitual thing. When this, then that. Byouki no toki pizza o tabemasu. When I'm sick, I eat pizza. So this is also sort of a when this, then that type of thing. So when the verb is in the past tense, now that the, uh, the main event happens after... So if we think of this as event A and this is the main event, event A is finished. It's done when this happens. So itta toki pizza o tabemasu. When I've gone, when I'm already there, I'll eat pizza. Itta toki pizza o tabemasu. When I've already gone, I will eat pizza. When I went, as in when I was already there, I ate pizza. When I went and was already there, I ate pizza. So this, this is, it's finished. It's already happened. So here's, this happened before this. That's all. When it's present tense, if we look up here, this happens at the same time or after the main event. So it's in the future or at the same time. In this case, it's already happened. Okay. So it's in the past of this main event. So I've already gone. Itta toki pizza o tabemashita. When I was then, went and already there, I ate pizza. Kanashikatta toki pizza o tabemashita. So when I was sad, I ate pizza. So now it's in the past of this. Mm, yeah, genki datta toki pizza o tabemashita. So when I was energetic, I ate pizza. Byouki datta toki pizza o tabemashita. When I was sick, I ate pizza. Pizza o tabete iru toki shiawase da. You can also use the teiru form, actually. So when it, when something happens during an event, so if it's a long, ongoing event, so while I was eating, something happened, you can use it like that. So tabeteiru toki, tomodachi ga kita. My friend showed up while I was eating. So you can use teiru in that case. In this case, I've said, life is good when I'm eating pizza. Pizza o tabeteiru toki shiawase da. So what you didn't realize there, or maybe you did realize, is we basically have a pizza poem. Iku toki pizza o tabemasu. Iku toki pizza o tabemashita. Kanashi toki pizza o tabemasu. Genki na toki pizza o tabemasu. Byouki no toki pizza o tabemasu. Itta toki pizza o tabemasu. Itta toki pizza o tabemashita. Kanashikatta toki pizza o tabemashita. Genki datta toki pizza o tabemashita. Byouki datta toki pizza o tabemashita. Pizza o tabete iru toki shiawase da. Thank you very much. Alright, let's jump into the dialogue. I'll read it slowly one time. Full speed, we'll go over the English translation. I'll get to the question and then I'll answer any of your questions. So, Arigato ne iyo. 社長は電話した時からのチラシを頼んだ。え、頼まなかったよ。そうか。次会う時 
たのんでくれるはい、ボスビール。ありがとうね。いいよ。社長は電話したとき、カラーのチラシを頼んだえ頼まなかったよ。そうか。次会うとき、頼んでくれる怒ってる。By the way, when Japanese people are mad, they go like this. They puff out their lips. When, especially when they're mad at their kids. That means the Japanese person is mad. If someone does that at you, you are in trouble. You're in trouble. That's what that means. Arigato ne. Hey, thanks. いいよ No problem. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Shacho wa denwa shita toki. So he's already called. He's called them. Kara no chirashi wo tanonda. So he's called. That means he's on the phone already. It's in the past tense, right? So that's in the past. Kara no chirashi wo tanonda. Did he request color pamphlets? え頼まなかったよ。What? No, he didn't. He didn't. そうか。次会うとき頼んでくれる。So here we've got the event. The、uh, thing is in the future. So next time you meet him in the future. 頼んでくれる。Would you ask him to do it? Da, 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 da. Seriously, this person asked me to do so many things for them. What are they going to do for me? The question for this section is What is something you do when you're sad? For me, kanashi toki pizza o tabemasu. Let's get to work on apologizing for specific actions. This section is quite simple despite this mess of a slide, but apologizing for things you've done is a very useful skill to have. So we already have the skill of saying, I'm sorry, but as you get older, I'm sorry by itself is not necessarily enough to express your sorrow. So, you gotta be able to say, I'm sorry for doing such and such a thing. That's a much better apology. When you're specific about the things that you are sorry for, it's better. To do that in Japanese, you take the te form and add sumimasen deshita. A slightly less polite, but not, not unpolite, but just a slightly lower level of politeness version of that would be te gomen nasai. And then the, the least polite version would be te gomen. This is something you might use if it's not, it's not like something you've done seriously wrong. It's just like, well, maybe it is. It could be, but it's for people in your in group. So when I say that, I mean people like really, really close friends or your immediate family, stuff like that. Then you might just say, ah, so de tabete gomen. I'm, I'm sorry I ate that thing. You can also use this for things that you did not do. You just use the negative te form plus sumimasen desh. The negative te form plus gomen nasai. The negative te form plus gomen. And that means I'm sorry I didn't do such and such a thing. So let's look at some examples of that. Tabete sumimasen deshita. I'm so sorry that I ate it. Tabete gomen nasai. I'm sorry that I ate it. Tabete gomen. Sorry I ate it. That basically expresses the level of politeness going down, down, down into fairly casual. Sorry, I ate it. But it can really, like, if it's with. Tone can be very important. Like, if it's someone close to you, Tabete go man! Right? That sounds like you're sorry. Tone is very important in these situations. Some examples of a negative, or a more complicated example, sorry, is Pizza o tabete sumimasen deshita. Someone was thinking about pizza or was very tired, I'm not sure which. I'm so sorry that I ate the pizza. Pizza o tabete gomen nasai. I'm sorry that I ate the pizza. Pizza o tabete gomen. Just pointing out that the particles you're going to use are the same that you would use in any situation where you use this verb. So the thing you ate will be marked, as always, by wo. Changing that to negative, so I'm sorry I didn't. Pizza o kawanakute sumimasen deshita. I'm so sorry that I didn't buy pizza. Pizza o kawanakute. So, for those of you who forget the negative te form, or as I like to call it, the negative te form, you,、um, when you make a casual negative verb, you turn it into, for example, kawa becomes kawanai, you treat it basically like an e adjective. It's very much like an e adjective, the negative of verbs, the, the,、um, the short form negative. So, what you do to make the te form of a negative is you cut the e. And add kute. 
just like you would with an adjective, an e adjective. So kawanakute sumimasen deshita. I'm so sorry that I didn't buy pizza. Pizza o kawanakute gomen nasai. I'm sorry that I didn't buy pizza. Pizza o kawanakute gomen. Sorry I didn't buy pizza. Pizza o kawanakute honto ni sumimasen deshita. So this is important. This is not in Genki. But when you're really, really sorry for doing something, you gotta use honto ni. Nani nani kawanakute honto ni sumimasen deshita. I'm truly, truly, truly sorry that I didn't do that thing. And you could use it as a positive as well. Tabete honto ni sumimasen deshita. You'd put that in between the te and the sumimasen deshita. Honto ni gomen nasai. When you're really sorry for just anything, you don't necessarily need the te form either. Just use honto ni to really, really drive that home that you're sorry. We'll read the dialogue slowly once and then at full speed. Osoku natte sumimasen deshita. Daijoubu da yo. Denwa suru ne. Beep, 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 beep. Sakki denwa shita toki. Chirashi wo tanomimashita yo ne. Sono chirashi wa kara de tsukutte kuremasen ka? Sono toki tanomanakute gomen nasai ne. Sumimasen deshita. I should have said honto ni sumimasen deshita. Full speed. Osoku natte sumimasen deshita. 大丈夫だよ。電話するね。さっき電話した時チラシを頼みましたよね。そのチラシはカラーで作ってくれませんか？その時頼まなくてごめんなさいね。クリック。本当にすみませんでした。Let's go over the English. So what happens here is I've already told Shacho that I needed him to actually order the chirashi or the pamphlets in color. So I've already told him off screen. So now I'm apologizing that I, I'm late. I'm sorry I didn't tell him earlier, basically, saying I'm late. Osoku natte sumimasen deshita. I'm sorry I was late in telling you. Daijoubu da yo. It's fine. Denwa suru ne. I'll call, okay? Sakki. This is new. This doesn't show up in Genki. I don't know why. It's very useful. It means earlier. Just before. So it's the same day. So you would say sakki. If you wanted to say the day before, if it was the day before, I know, kino denmashita toki, for example. Mai would also be fine, but sakki earlier. Denmashita toki. So here's our shita toki. This is already in the past. Chirashi o tanomimashita yo ne. I, uh, I asked for, I requested pamphlets, right? Yo ne, when you combine those, it means right. Sono chirashi wa kara de tsukutte kuremasen ka? Would it be possible for you to make those in color? Sono toki, tanomanakute gomen nasai ne. Sorry, I didn't ask for it at that time. Sono toki is sort of a phrase on its own. So you, you don't need to put no in between it or anything. Sono toki, tanomanakute gomen nasai ne. Sumimasen deshita. I'm so sorry. The question for this section is not a question. I want you to apologize for doing whatever this is. How dare you? How dare you do this? Apologize right now. Here's another one. This is you. Apologize. So what I want you to do is I want you to imagine what this guy should be apologizing to you for. It's something he does every morning. There is a correct answer to this one. What should this guy be apologizing to you for? Pretend you're him and apologize. So, with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, with all of that in mind, thumbs up. Oh, kogeki shite kudasai. There's 27 people here and 33 likes, so I think you already did. So, thank you so much for that. Also, channel toroku onegai shimasu. I think you guys are already subscribed, but if you're watching this later on, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you know when I go live or release awesome videos that teach you about Japanese and how to learn Japanese better. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you enjoy the things to come and thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Arigatou gozaimasu. Otsukare sama deshita. Mata tsugi no video de aimashou ne.